Hey everyone, I'm super excited to talk about the RPM limiter in this video. It is essentially a software RPM limiter for drone racing. A little bit about me, I've been flying FPV for seven years and I've been racing for three. I've really enjoyed spec racing, but a big issue with spec racing is that the hardware actually does make quite a big difference. This is some footage before the RPM limiter. And you can see that Jordan gets a better start than me, but because my quad is just faster than his, I'm able to quickly catch up along the straightaway. So for reference, this is what a street league race looks like after the RPM limiter. And if you focus on the right side of the screen, you're going to see these quads are super close. So March 2022 is kind of the origin of the RPM limiter. I had gone to the Street League race, one of, I think the first Street League race actually, in Citrus Springs. There was a big difference between people's quads. Street League had done a lot to really try to equalize the playing field with motor output limits depending on your motor KV and your size and all this stuff. But some people's quads were just straight up faster. So in October of 2022, the first prototype came out. This is with using a non-linearized limiter, which I'll talk about later. It was filled with bugs. It was super sketchy, but it did demonstrate that the concept worked. So in December of 2022, that's when it was flown at the Tiny Trainer Series 2 race, which was kind of a big fail because there was a bug in it that when you went to zero throttle and you had dynamic idle on, it wouldn't actually use dynamic idle and your motors would just kind of shut off. Um, Evan did run this for a couple of heats, so the concept did work, but there were definitely some bugs to work out. This was also when the first official Street League announcement of the RPM limiter came out. So also the pull request for this was created and I have a link for that in the description and it was actually six months later it got approved. So a bit about the problem, motors are not all the same and even in, with the same motor they won't have consistent KV between them. Uh, so it's possible to actually bin motors, like just buy a bunch of motors and then figure out which ones are the fastest ones and then just take those, put those in your quad and then just don't use the rest. Terrible waste of money. Um, also motors like the X Nova motors are really fast and really expensive and then the cheap ones that were kind of small those were the slowest motors and your batteries played a huge role a really new battery was just straight up faster so spec racing leagues had to either force locked it down manufacturers um, which didn't even solve all the problems or they could set motor output limits so street league did the motor output limits um, basically for different motors there would be different output limits uh, depending on the KV, but the KV sometimes wasn't consistent, so they had to like measure a bunch of motors. It, it was a whole deal. And there was kind of this arms race to always just be finding like the fastest motor. And so this kind of sucked. No one liked this. The RPM limiter would make all motors competitive and it would make all batteries competitive. Of course, in the spec, you are limited to a 5S 2200 uh, milliamp hour. So there's actually two ways of doing RPM limiting that I found. The first one that I thought of was the non-linearized method, which is essentially a reactive way of controlling uh, RPMs, where if it goes above the RPM limit, you just use a PID controller to bring the throttle down. Um, and the other way, which I found out later that we could do, is just run the PID controller the entire time and decouple the throttle from the RPMs. So your throttle is just controlling a set point and then there's a PID controller that is following that set point. And each of them has their own benefits which I'm going to talk about in a sec. So here are the two horsemen. There's the non-linearized, that is a natural throttle curve. It's coming in Beta 5.4.5 uh, but it needs the, that initial throttle cap estimate to have it feel good right off the launch. And that is definitely the biggest negative of this. Uh, hopefully that's something that I've worked out. But this is what Freedom Spec is currently using as of whenever this video is posted. Uh, but they might be experimenting with linear eyes as well. Uh, there certainly are advantages and disadvantages to each. Um, so in linearized, that is a linear throttle curve, but it is customizable in technically. Not in the current implementation, but since we're controlling a set point and we have the throttle and the RPMs decoupled, you can make that curve whatever you want. So that's something I do want to do in the future. Uh, it also has ex uh, motor acceleration limiting, which is really important for Street League because we wanted to make sure that all the motors are the same. 
And the cool thing is, is that if you limit both acceleration and RPMs, you're essentially power limiting, which really equalizes the motors quite well. And it has a consistent throttle feel at all times, regardless of the battery. But there are some extreme edge case bugs currently. They're not actually achievable in Street League. They're all mentioned in, in the description because I'm lazy. So it's important to note that the RPM limiter is limiting the average of all four motors, not the max RPM. So this means that you're going to have a pretty consistent thrust throughout a turn, but it also means that the max ESC RPM that you see at the end of a flight is going to be much higher than what you would expect and much higher than what you have the limiter set at because in a roll, two motors are going to go up and two are going to go down, so the average will be at the RPM limit, but your max will be a lot higher. So I made a video where I explained how the non-linearized and linearized uh, limiters work, but it was really hard to follow, so I'm going to make it again. On the left here is the RC command. This is the throttle on your radio. Um, and on the right is the motor output, as well as the motor RPMs. And here we're just going to assume that they're both directly proportional the entire time. There's no motor acceleration issues, because we do see in the field a lot of the times that they're, uh, the motors accelerate extremely fast, and usually you don't even notice it. So what happens here as we increase the throttle and approach this RPM limit is we have this angry PID controller up here that as soon as the RPMs get into this region, it's going to push it down and then it's going to let off and then it's going to push it down again. So as you can see, we're increasing the throttle and then as soon as we go into that zone, the PID controller becomes active and starts pushing down the beta flight motor output which in turn pushes down the motor RPMs. And so we do that again, we keep going up in throttle and the PID becomes active, pulls it down, keep going up, goes above, we pull it down. It's important to note that it's not going above the limit by very much. It's way exaggerated in this drawing. So one of the big issues with this is that if you're above a certain throttle, let's say 60% throttle gives you around 18k RPM. Any throttle above that is going to be doing nothing because the RPM limiter is going to be keeping the RPMs right at 18k. So essentially, we need to add a throttle cap. So that's this throttle cap learning. Uh, the PID controller is reacting fast and the throttle cap is reacting slow. So we do want it slow because in turns and whatnot, uh, we don't want the throttle cap increasing or decreasing unexpectedly. And the throttle cap is initially estimated by kV times voltage, but again, I'll probably put this on the screen. Uh, I do have some really cool data. Uh, I have an open PR right now in Betaflight for a new feature, which is going to compensate for the efficiency loss at higher RPMs, which should give much more consistent feeling throttle uh, when you set your RPM limit above like around 20k RPMs. And what's really cool is that I found that this works for any quad because I measured tiny whip data and five inch race quad data. And there was a line that is pretty darn linear that maps the expected RPM with the efficiency. Efficiency I'm defining here as the actual measured RPM versus what we expect it to be. In the current implementation for the initial throttle cap, we just say the efficiency is 1.0. Whatever RPM we expect, kV times voltage is what we're gonna see. Let's make the throttle cap based off of that. But now I'm derating the estimate at a higher and higher RPM. So the five inch data is down here at the back um, and it lines up pretty darn well with the whoop data. So we can see that there's an efficiency loss as we increase in RPMs that's independent of propeller size, um, which I find really interesting. This is how linearized RPM works. PID is active all the time and it's just going to 20% of the RPM limit. You go to 40% throttle, and now it's at 40% of the RPM limit. You go to 70, it's at 70% of the RPM limit. And 100, it's at the RPM limit. Um, it's quite simple. This is just a linear, completely linear throttle curve. It could be customizable in the future as well. With the linearized, it's very simple to do acceleration limiting. All you have to do is limit the acceleration of the set point. Anytime in one time step, if the set point goes beyond what the acceleration limit is, we just bring it down. 
There's also a deceleration limit, but that is turned off for Street League, and I recommend it just not be used because it's kind of dangerous. You move your throttle down, and it takes a little while to bring the RPMs back down. I'm not even sure if it's accessible anymore. So there is a lot of cool stuff that comes up when you try to do this. I term can wind up if you're if you're not able to meet the RPM limit. Suddenly you have a bunch of I term that just keeps on ramping up. So there is wind down in it. So if it's below the digital idle offset, we're gonna slowly uh, taper off the I term. This is the max RPM limiter. This was just an experiment I was running. It just uses max RPM instead of average RPM. And this is kind of interesting because it requires that you run a different tune depending on RPM. Maybe there is a solution out there for this, but it sounds like a lot of code to write. But this definitely felt really interesting. It felt a lot like the OG Freedom Spec, but it's just another thing that I was working on. I think average RPM in general is a better way of doing it. So, hope you enjoyed the video. This project was a long time in the making, and I'm super excited that it's being adopted by Street League and Freedom Spec and the other spec leagues. It is really great to see. Uh, it was a lot of work. I couldn't have done it without people like Sky and Lamon and the whole Betaflight development team. They were a huge help. I have some really crazy projects planned, so if you want to see that, please do subscribe here.